Hello students, we're going to go ahead and continue our um, lecture for today, January 12th. This is the second video for today, and let me go ahead and pull up um, our PowerPoint presentation. So we just got finished talking about one point linear perspective, okay, which we have in this first diagram, where you have one vanishing point on the horizon line. Now we will talk about two point perspective. And in two point perspective, the only difference is instead of having one vanishing point, you have two. So over here in this illustration that you see over on the left is a vanishing point on the far left and over on the far right is a vanishing point and this line that those vanishing points on is the horizon line okay now if you have a box directly on the horizon line right at eye level you're only going to be able to see the front sides of the box and let me grab my box for illustration purposes so now instead of seeing just the front of the box like in one point we're actually seeing two sides of the box and if the box is on the horizon line you're only going to see the the two sides if you raise it above the horizon line you'll see the two sides and the bottom and remember the horizon line is eye level at eye level and if you raise it below the horizon line you're going to see the two sides and then the top of the box, okay? And that's what we have in this illustration. When you're looking up and you can see the bottom of the box, that's actually called the worm's eye view, like you're a little worm on the ground. And then if the box is under the horizon line and you can see the sides of the box and the top of the box that's called the bird's eye view like an aerial view looking down on top of a building okay these boxes can be converted into buildings cars furniture a bed a dresser lots of different things okay okay now we're going to look at, a, at an example of an illustration this is a beautiful print of a drawing of a building in Italy and here we have an illustration on the left that shows the horizon line and then you have vanishing point A at the far left, vanishing point B at the far right. The front leading edge is a straight vertical line and then from the top of that vertical line you recede the side to the right vanishing point you receive the bottom to the right vanishing point and then you receive the left edge from the top to the left vanishing point and um, the line on the left side to the left vanishing point from the bottom as well. So now you actually have um, these orthogonals or diagonal lines going receding back into the vanishing point. And then you do the windows the same way and the doors, okay? So here you see a finished drawing of a beautiful building with a lot of decoration added. You can do this. You can make drawings like this someday, very soon. Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Here we have a painting by Edward Hopper. It's called Apartment Houses. And this was created in 1923. Um, it's oil on canvas. This would have been during the modern art period. And this is an unusual interior. It actually has layers of space revealed through windows um, that are painted in two-point perspective. The perspective is used to direct the viewer back and forth into the picture plane. And so this is kind of a, a weird way to use perspective, but it works. So this over here on the left, we see a window into an apartment building and we see a woman who looks like maybe she's putting a tablecloth on a table, but notice these lines are going to go to a vanishing point that are going to be over here somewhere, probably up somewhere in this top right hand corner. 
So this is actually going to be below the horizon line. And then over here next to this building is another building. Just imagine a, an alleyway in between these two buildings because we're on like a second story level. And then there's a vanishing point going this way. There's a, a orthogonal line going back this way. And then there's one coming back this way. So the vanishing point on this side is going to be over here in the top left hand corner. Okay. And again, just like when we looked at the plaza image with the one point perspective, you can actually look at a painting and run you just with your eye, you can guesstimate where the vanishing points are going to be once you understand how perspective works, linear perspective. Now, the third is three-point linear perspective, number three. And with three-point linear perspective, um, it's a little different. You, you have a horizon line. You have a vanishing point somewhere on the left, a vanishing point somewhere on the right of the horizon line. But you have another vanishing point that's actually not on the horizon line. Um, so here we have two boxes. Here's a box, a cube, and then here's a box, another cube. One's above the vanishing point or the horizon line, and the other is below the horizon line. So if you draw a line straight up that front leading edge and you put a third vanishing point on that line, then you can direct, instead of the edges going straight up and down, you can make them go at an angle. And that creates a third, a three-point perspective. So just look at this picture for a little bit. And it's going to make a little bit more sense to you, okay? This is how uh, pyramids are drawn as well. And I'll have you do an activity where you draw a pyramid using three-point perspective, okay? Pyramids have three, well, four sides. They have four sides. We can imagine we're drawing one of the great pyramids in Egypt, all right? And here is an image of an illustration. It's a computer illustration from 1992 so this is old school computer graphics an Autodesk 3D Studio release 2 uh, software was used but you get the idea this is a bird's eye view so the boxes are below the, the horizon line everything's below eye level so we're up in the sky maybe we're in a helicopter looking down on this these skyscrapers um, though not, th though this is not strictly in three-point perspective, the picture is an unusual variation in the depiction of three-dimensional objects in space. So we actually get an idea of this narrowing on the edges, like we saw in the in this previous illustration. So this box would apply for this image. So here. You see the top of the building, and then the edges of the building are slightly curving down towards this third vanishing point. And that's what we see right here. The top of the building, or the top of the box, and then the edges slightly curving inward for that third vanishing point. So that third vanishing point is going to be probably down here somewhere. That these orthogonal lines are going to go to. These diagonal lines, okay? Okay, now, um, there are some problems with perspective. It can never depict a shape or mass as it is known to be 100%, okay? It can portray appearances from only one position in space. It can only portray appearances from only one position in space. So it's limited to one viewpoint, okay? And then number three, the necessary recession of parallel lines toward common points readily leads to monotonous effects. Because, um, and what monotony means is the same effects over and over. Like if I were to talk to you in a monotone voice, hello, how are you today? I hope everything is going well with you. We have several things to study. 
So monotone, the same, there's no variances where I could be like, hi, how are you today? We have several things to study. So I've used my uh, voice, I've pitched it in different variations to sound more exciting, okay? Well, the same can be true in art. Um, some things can be monotonous if um, they're basically uh, repeated in the same patterns or if they're predictable, okay? People like an element of surprise, even in artwork. And number four, the reduction of scale within a single object resulting from the convergence of lines is a type of distortion, which we'll look at the next slide to see that. So here we have the converging parallels again. Here we have the rectangle, but then when you turn that image, just like we did with the sheet of paper earlier, whoa, this takes me a minute. To, I have to do everything backwards. So if we turn that paper and we get those converging parallel lines, the lines on top that were parallel but now basically don't look parallel, okay, um, this diagram indicates that a rectangular shape depicted in perspective becomes a trapezoid and leaves spatial vacuums above and below the red lines. Okay. Give you a second to ingest that thought. So here's a piece by M.C. Escher. It's called Waterfall 1961, and this is a lithograph, which is a print. He um, made multiple prints of this image. It's 15 inches by 11 inches tall. So from his early youth, Escher practiced the graphic technique of perspective and for many years strived to master that skill. He was obsessed with perspective. Later he found ideas that he could communicate by extending his perspective technique and became fascinated with visually subverting our common sense view of the three-dimensional world. So in this print, Escher knew it was impossible to see multiple stories of the same building on one level, yet the water flows downhill from the first floor to the third floor. So he's playing tricks, okay? He understands how perspective works. He understands how the rules of logic work. And he's, he's playing tricks. So here we have water from the first floor, and it's flowing uphill, which gravity won't allow that to happen. And then it's cascading down into this pool of water, and it's being generated um, by this turbine, which is forcing the water back up. So... This couldn't happen in reality. Escher understands that, so he's having some fun. He's having some fun in this image. And then there are number 10. There's some other projection systems that I'm going to share with you quickly that artists, um, architects also use. One is called oblique projection. The other one is isometric projection. And then the last one is orthographic drawing. So we're going to look at these quickly. Okay, with oblique projection, it looks at first glance to be related to one point linear perspective with a flat frontal view that is always parallel to the picture plane, like we see here. For architectural and engineering applications, the front plane is always drawn at full scale. Now with oblique perspective, all the right and the left side edges that would have converged at a single vanishing point are drawn parallel. So all of these edges, instead of them coming together in the distance at a horizon line, they're drawn parallel, so they're not converging, okay? And this, there's actually, this is 90 degrees right here, and this angle here is a 45 degree angle. That's half of 90, okay? So with oblique projection, you're always going to have a 45 degree angle with the